our featured BBB Wise Giving Alliance accredited charity seal holders for this episode are Prostate Cancer Foundation, Ronald McDonald House Charities, Rainforest Action Network. To find out more about these and other BBB Wise Giving Alliance accredited charity seal holders, go to give.org. You're listening to the Heart of Giving podcast with Art Taylor, powered by BBBgive.org. Here we explore the motivations that form the basis of giving and service. We inspire generosity and celebrate the transformative effects that giving and service have on the human spirit and on community. The conversations featured on the podcast also uncover giving strategies that educate and provide tools to help listeners make impactful gifts of both their time and money. We hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Heart of Giving podcast, powered by BBBgive.org. Give.org is the nation's standards-based charity evaluator, and it's your one-stop source for information on giving and reports on the most asked about charities. I'm Art Taylor, your host. We continue to turn our attention to what's going on in the Ukraine. When the war started now over a year ago, we saw an outpouring of support from American philanthropic institutions, companies, and most importantly, American citizens to support the efforts underway to help people who were affected by the war in the region. And uh, I know our website got an enormous amount of attention during that time because people wanted to know where they could go to support charities that were doing important work in the region at the time and who could actually deliver aid and other needed support to people who were escaping from the war in the Ukraine or being forced to move from their homes to other places. We decided that we would try to stay in tune with what was going on there. And over the last year or so, we've had other individuals speak to us about the situation, including some charity leaders, individuals who are parts of large international relief organizations who are assisting in the area, And we were also able to speak with an advocate for the Ukraine who gave us some insight as to what might need to happen if we're going to deliver the kind of support that people need. That was with uh, former Ukrainian finance minister, Natalie Juresko. And I commend that podcast to you, as well as the ones we've done with other international organization leaders. Today, however, we're going to introduce to you someone who is actually a Ukrainian citizen. She's lived and worked in the Ukraine all of her life. She is currently the co-founder and director of the charity monitoring organization in the Ukraine called Charity Turner. She also worked in the journalism field prior to that. And she's also a CSR specialist and media trainer. Uh, But we wanted to reach out to her because of her her status as a monitoring organization leader. Just like Give.org, which is tasked with identifying the most trustworthy charities in the United States for people to give to, we have partner organizations of separate, of course, but partner organizations like Charity Turner in Ukraine and a host of others around the world that are doing monitoring work to help people in those countries understand what's going on with the charity scene. But today we have Katerina Zuk. We call her Katya. And Katya is going to speak to us about what she's seeing, what charities there are ones and how we go about determining how we can support them because I know Americans are still very concerned about what's going on there and still want to provide some of their philanthropic 
dollars to help that situation. So, uh, Katerina, we are thrilled to have you. And I should add, we've commissioned Katerina to begin doing blogs every other week. And you'll be able to read her blog on give.org, which will provide insight to you from a bird's eye view. Now, Katerina is not living currently in the Ukraine, and we're going to hear that story. She's living in in Poland, in Warsaw right now. But you're going to find out that she has a bird's eye view on the situation in the Ukraine and what the needs and aspirations are for philanthropic groups that are trying to help people on the ground. And this is part two of our interview with Katya. You can hear part one we released last week. You can listen to that one. It's up on any podcast platform for you to hear. I hope you'll check it out as well. So, Katrina, welcome to the Heart of Giving podcast. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. So I wanted, to, I wanted to ask anyway about your work. And you were the co-founder of an organization in Ukraine that, like the Wise Giving Alliance here in the United States, monitors charities in the Ukraine. Can you tell us a little bit about how that got started and what the status of it is at this point? Uh, you know, 13 years ago, I will head of a board now, Pavel Novikov. He told me an interesting sentence. He told me, hey, you, you're a good sales manager. I'm a good sales manager. <laughs> mm-hmm. a good sales manager so but but maybe after some years that's really uh, easy to sell product placement or advertising maybe it's easy i said yeah for me it's uh, it's easy it's interesting and maybe you want to sell maybe you want to sell uh, human life they said what and he proposed me to be a fundraiser on the first charity platform for online charity. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're a sales manager. So go. Go sell. Yeah, go and sell. And I said, wow. This was a question not about money. You know, it's a question about future of my kids. But the future for my kids, mm-hmm. it's, it's new. That's another level in, in my life, another level. Yeah, I started to, to work with, uh, with uh, Novikov. And at that time, I learned a lot, really a lot uh, and about uh, monitoring. Uh, I learned a lot of uh, desert eye. So, yeah, yeah, and- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how it works. So, because we had, uh, and we talk about ideas, uh, about our strategy, about plans. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's, it's marketing. We can do the same all the time. Yeah. Right. We have some, some plans and uh, I wrote marketing strategy and we started to, to talk with him about monitoring. So that's, yeah, yeah that's charities, uh, uh, that's foundations in uh, our platform. We should check it, verify it. Yeah. We should, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, all uh, the first 20, first it was only 20 foundations from all the, uh, from all Ukraine. It was a 2011 year. Yeah. Asha goes to everyone. He were in yeah, in every yeah. office, <laughs> it mm-hmm. was with, with every manager, CEO, foundation, <laughs> foundators of these foundations. After when we uh, leave uh, this project, they, the owner of UBV, uh, owner of that platform, they didn't want to monitor charity foundation. So mm-hmm. yeah, so we have. We had another ideas. Yeah, we choose another way. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, after that, uh, I can't work or even write articles, not about social, but about charity. <laughs> That's, yeah. So yeah, my, my own interest in my life, I, I live in it, you know, <laughs> because, because of Pasha Domingo. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, <laughs> and by the way, Pasha, by the way, is a co founder yeah. of a Charity Tuner. Of yeah. And he is quite an individual. He's a force of nature. Yeah. Um, I've met him and he's uh, so full of life and energy. And maybe we'll talk about him a little later, but he's still in Ukraine doing some media work there. We'll talk about him later. But go ahead, uh, uh, Katya. So after a revolution, uh, eight years ago, charity foundations that uh, we were in connection after we leave this uh, platform working project, they started to ask me, hey, what are you doing? That's uh, a lot of raw, a lot of scammers because of uh, revolution and the nation increased. So, Katya, you should do something. You're, you're, you, you can write about it. You work with GR, you know, this and there and work in media. So, you should do something with it. That's a problem for us. You should do something. They said, uh, okay, maybe <laughs> maybe I should do something. I leave new channel. I work there at this time as a head of Department of Development Proposition. I leave a new channel and leave my job in media. Uh, goes to my colleagues, journalist in Many, at that time, at many, many TV channels and radio channels in Ukraine and proposed them to lighting a story about uh, scum, about uh, the straw, about uh, some, some people on the streets with uh, transparent boxes that accumulate money for charity, for help Ukrainians. So we start informational campaign no report, it's scum. And it's really started to work. Yeah. So because this, you know, that's a horrible story that three or five of these people with boxes staying on the, on the, <laughs> on the one, <laughs> on the one road, yeah. you know, at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we talk about it with the foundation and they told me that, Katya, uh, you know, we can't ask volunteers to go with trans transparency boxes by the streets to the transport because by our legislation, Ukrainian legislation, if someone will beat them, yeah, uh, we will pay. We will pay a lot of money for repair by insurance anyway, but it's a lot of money. Uh, we are charities. <laughs> we can... <laughs> We haven't uh, a lot of money for it, for sure. We use uh, online platforms. We use boxes uh, on the on concerts, maybe on events, but not on the street. Not it's the street, not a transparent yeah. story, no. Yeah. So after yeah. half of the year, you know that sometimes we met this guys with boxes, but uh, this was really. Uh, Sometimes one or three, one or two times per month, maybe, and then in other regions, people that heard about this uh, action that saw it on uh, TV uh, or, or heard it uh, by radio, they started to ask all these guys with box, "Where's the report? Where's the report? Please, we want to see the report." <laughs> No report. Yeah. Everybody wanted to report yeah. and they couldn't find Everybody, it. Everybody, yeah. Where's the <laughs> report? And that's really, uh, that's problem. <laughs> and this started to be a problem for all the straw. So they go out because uh, even uh, some uh, some guys in, the, in Lviv, uh, they even <laughs> beat this uh, <laughs> This uh, student, this was student or boy with uh, with box. <laughs> See, you know, we had to go out, out. <laughs> so that's yeah. This was really, really interesting. 
And uh, now we have the same uh, problem online, the ele electronic, yeah, but yeah, by Viber or WhatsApp. Yeah. So that's problem the same. So what's the status of the organization now, now that you're dealing with this war? I mean, are you able to provide similar services now or is the organization sort of on hold? No, we started to work as uh, volunteers. We, I stopped to ask money, stopped to ask donations for, for a charity tuner. And it's, it's normal <laughs> because all money, all money now should go for our victory. For people in need, for Ukrainian forces, that, that's normal. I work as volunteer. That's normal for me. Because I work, I worked before many, many years, not for money, but for idea. Yeah, we, we still work. That's interesting that in this uh, horrible situation, uh, when uh, foundation have a lot of works, work and a lot of problem, foundation still asked me to check their work and foundation still fulfill our online, our Google form, special Google form, and the answer to my questions, yeah, and talk about situation. And it's really, I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it because they, they want, even in these times, even when they have increased donations, Really, they have increased donations, but after all, they came to me. They told me, "Hey, yeah, we now have three, four times more money, and we have a year ago, but after it, we we want to show you, Katya. We want to show you that we are transparency and trust. So that's yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that's for me. That's amazing." <laughs> It is. Transparency and trust is key. And they understand that even in the circumstances that they're in yeah. now. That is impressive. Well, let me ask you this. So when I think about the work that you're doing, I also have to think about the charities and the work that they're doing right now. So I want to know from you, what do you currently see as some of the needs that charities can fulfill right now? What is the biggest need for people in the region who fled Poland, who fled Ukraine, or those who are in Ukraine now that charities can kind of help with? The first, uh, we have the first two points. Globally, people, pe people that need home, people need their home. That's a lot of people that moved from their homes because of occupation, new one occupation. Yeah, we have the old uh, story of occupation in uh, Crimea, in uh, Lugansk and Donetsk uh, region. But we have a new one, the South, uh, and they did their homes. Some of them are uh, now homeless completely homeless and without any possibility to buy something or rent something, people without work, with kids, and in a horrible, really in horrible situation. Without the story of their life, yeah, are fired. <laughs> yeah, and they, they want to live as people, not as, as usual, not as before, but as people. Now that these families live in a horrible dormitory. No, you can live in dormitory if you're adult and uh, you're alone. Yeah, it, maybe. Maybe you can live in it. But if you have kids and medical, maybe medical, some, pro some medical problems, problems with health, you can live in this dormitory every, every day, months by months. So, yeah. That's first need for people in Ukraine. Housing. <laughs> housing, yeah. You can name it housing. The same problem for refugees to go, goes out. Then now in, um, 
Europe Union, in the USA, maybe the same problem, yeah. <laughs> and in Canada, and in, in another country, not in Europe Union, in, in Great Britain, Ireland, it's problem where, where to live, how to live, how to find a job, how to learn language. But the same for refugees inside in, in Europe Union, in other countries, the same that uh, emotions, psychological support, yeah, because that's, yeah, we are like a wave was the same with me. So why I understand it. Yeah, that's it. really your, <gasps> I can everything. Yes, I understand the English. I can learn Polish, you, you know. So that's, yeah, you want to do something. And then, no. That's why I'm not in home, and yeah, that's 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 problem for for all of us. Just, we have the same problem for all of us: housing and psychology. Yeah, emotional support. Yeah, emotional yeah. support. Yeah, sometimes trauma. There's a trauma associated with what you've gone through. Yeah. And I can't imagine what it's like for even young children, for that matter, how difficult it must be for children who've been uprooted and in some cases separated from their parents. I would imagine some have been separated from their parents because of what may have happened to their parents. You know, yeah. um, the trauma that many of you have gone through has to be addressed if you're going to be whole and healthy. And I'm not sure how charities participate in that. I guess they're, you need people who have those skills to come and, and I guess, support you. Would, would that be a, a way of addressing that, you think? Having people with those skills to provide the counseling services that you might need? You know, that's a lot of foundation charities that provide mm -hmm. psychological, yeah, they emotional do support. Yeah. Yeah. But for us, it's not on uh, the first place. You know, the, the first mm. place we think about uh, about home, about money, <laughs> about yeah, food, money. yeah, about schools, kindergartens. Yeah. 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 So that's that's first for us, and uh, we are all have trauma. You're a refugee or you're still at home with my neighbors. Some of my neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, they are at home last, uh, last years. I didn't go mm -hmm. away. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere. But we are all have trauma. That That's really, uh, that's true. And mm -hmm. people uh, now that now in, in Ukraine, they think that they have no trauma. <laughs> You know, mm. it's, yeah. yeah. So our society, Ukrainian society, dislikes. I should find this word. Separated, separate, separate. separate. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. That's not divided. but separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. separated because part of us, maybe before war, wanted to go to Europe Union to live there. For example, mm -hmm. yes. They saw that better to live in uh, Europe or in USA. Yeah, I, I know people that uh, wanted to go to USA before. Now they have mm -hmm. this opportunity, for example, of to Canada. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's part. But mostly we separate in two parts. One part now in like, cross border is refugee in, mm -hmm. in Europe. Second part now in in, in Ukraine. Mm. So I sometimes I think, hey, we will came, we will turn back after war to Kiev with kids. For example, my Mara got mm. out from Kiev when she was twelve. Mm. She was twelve, and now she is thirteen years old. Yeah. For my youngest daughter, the first language is Polish. It's Polish. Yeah. She will be, after one week, she will be only three years old. 
so the she speak <laughs> really really fun <laughs> sometimes in Russian yeah. sometimes in Polish that's uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah my older daughter speak Polish she speak English very well she really she started to speak English here because mm -hmm. in Polish school English that's uh, yeah that's really good education and uh, yeah lessons of English and she started to speak and after that uh, she came to her class in Ukraine and how it will be it's teenagers you know mm. sometimes I thought about it because that's right. yeah yeah that's teenagers so that's the age Teenage. yeah whole different story uh, yeah right? yeah it's not about kids <laughs> it's about teenagers right, yeah. right. That's right. and I understand that we were uh, half of teenagers that was in Ukraine on the war yeah and half of teenagers mm -hmm. that was in in another country the school across yeah. the world across yeah. the world in, in Hungary the Ukrainian diaspora yeah now. yeah so it's it wouldn't be easy. <laughs> well, listen, we're into this pretty deep. We're going to probably have to end it here. But I wanted to give our listeners just a sense of what you've gone through and some ideas about what you're doing professionally uh, with your organization to help people identify charities that aren't scamming them, charities that are doing good work. And also to appreciate the needs that are going on now, which you lay out as being housing, number one. And secondly, emotional support, that being uh, to help deal with the trauma that you've all experienced. And in that, we've also found out that you see the situation as there being Ukrainians are separated. You have those who are living inside of Ukraine who may not see the trauma that they are experiencing, but they are nonetheless. And those outside of the Ukraine having different needs. So this has been very helpful, very enlightening. And we'll do these two, these two episodes, we'll do these as separate episodes. We'll divide these up so that people can absorb how you've answered these questions in two bites rather than one straight episode to give them the time to go through it a couple of times if they need to, to appreciate what you said. And again, I want to just highlight for everyone that uh, Katya will be doing a blog for us that you can see on give.org. It'll be starting soon and she'll be posting every two weeks to give us some insights into what's happening there and the charity scene in particular and the needs of the people that we can help with here in the United States and other places where you're listening to this podcast. So Katya, thank you for joining us today. And obviously there'll be much more to come through your blogs. And for all of those who are listening for the first time, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Heart of Giving podcast. And I hope that you will be a subscriber. Subscriptions are really important. Because the way the podcast algorithms work is that the more subscribers you have, the more people who are likely to discover that the podcast exists. And we've had such amazing guests on this show over the last year and a half, two years and a half now, two and a half years we've been doing this, that I just hope that more and more people get to know about it. And the way that happens is by you to go on your favorite podcast platform whether that's Apple, Spotify, Google Play, or Podbean for that matter, and just like the podcast, like the show, and you'll be a subscriber and you'll get all of the new editions as they come out each week. This is a weekly show every Tuesday. Well, and if you want to support the podcast financially, you can do so by going to give.org and making a donation there. And I hope you'll follow Katya's blog. It's really important for all of us here in the United States and other places who want to support Ukraine to understand what's going on in the charity space, because those organizations are filling the gaps. They are attempting to reach the needs of people in ways that we could never even imagine existed. 
So let's stay on top of that. And that's why I'm so excited to to have Katya now join us to provide that insight. So thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you back here for a new episode next week. You've just listened to the Heart of Giving podcast with Art Taylor. Be sure to tune in next time for a brand new episode. To listen to our other interviews, visit heartgiving.podbean.com. That's heartgiving.podbean.com. Subscribe to our show on major podcast platforms. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the BBB Wise Giving Alliance or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Podbean's Terms of Service.